Tonight we are gathered here to discuss a very important topic. One that stirs up controversy, emotion, anger, and worst of all, hatred. But that is not why we are here tonight. We are here to come together, to talk, to reason, and to listen. So who will be the big winner tonight? The simple answer is all of us. We cannot expect change or growth unless the convictions that we hold are questioned and opposed. This topic has been discussed before and will continue to be discussed after this. However, there will be no progress, no understanding, and no movement forward if we do not discuss it openly and honestly. If either of the groups want to be heard and understood this evening, it must come by diplomacy. We would love nothing more than to live in a world where it is simple to declare what is right and what is wrong. However, we don't live in that kind of world. The world we live in requires informed persons to make difficult choices based on a variety of factors. It is not simply enough to declare an act of moral wrong, make it illegal, and be done with it. Take, for instance, the act of lying. Lying is morally wrong. Most of us can agree to that. Yet if you lived during World War II in Nazi Germany and hid Jews in your attic, would it be wrong to lie to the Nazi to protect the life of those people? We can all agree that it would be morally wrong to tell the truth and cause the death of our Jewish friends. But didn't we just assume that lying is immoral? These are the problems we cause when we assume that this world is divided into absolute right and absolute wrong or good and evil. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's debate it's not about choice, or privacy, or abortion statistics, or back alley abortions, or women's rights, or religion, or contraceptives. Tonight's question is, what is the unborn? The entire debate revolves around this question. Before we can answer the question, can we kill the unborn, we must address the question, what is the unborn? If the unborn are nothing more than a random mass of cells, like a fingernail or a tooth, then certainly you may kill it. Let me say this again. If having an abortion is no different than clipping a fingernail or having a tooth removed, no justification is needed. We don't care, and neither should you. But if the unborn are human beings, then killing it is a much more serious issue that we must discuss further. If our opponents can provide adequate evidence tonight to show that the unborn are not human beings, we will concede to everything they say and join their side because we're more interested in finding the truth than we are interested in having our current position be right. They, the opposition keeps arguing uh, that what, what a human is. And yes, DNA does comprise a human, but then they brought in the argument of value. How do we argue value? That is not something that has to do with DNA. That's a personal and moral belief that we each cannot agree on because someone might see someone else having more value than another person, a sociopath having less value than someone who is working to feed the baby seals. Honestly, it's a case by case basis. And yes, we do want to, you know, we would love to outlaw the abortion of convenience, which just sounds horrible, obviously. But it's not possible to do that because we would have to look at each individual case and pry and probe and we probably would never get the information that we needed to accurately assess what the situation was. Her, in her research she found that 75 to 80 percent of rape victims who conceived chose to give their children life. Researchers Reardon, Makima, and Sobi in their book of victims and victors collected the testimonies of nearly 200 women and over 50 children who were conceived in rape. Excuse me, 200 women who were raped and carried their children and 50 children who were conceived in rape. Over nine years on this study, they looked at the pregnancy outcomes of sexual assaults. Their findings were that after any abortion, women suffered from guilt, depression, feelings of, quote, uh, feeling dirty, resentment of men, and low self-esteem feelings identical um, to those held by women after a rape. Their conclusion was that these two traumatic events 
compound these feelings in women. And they recommended that rape should be a contraindication for abortion because of the traumatic circumstances of conception. It is, is it fair to deny all these women the benefits that will help them raise their child or deter them from having an abortion? Is it acceptable for our society to pressure women into having an abortion simply because we are heartless to prevent, the, to provide a safety net for the poor? Now I ask you, is it fair to push your beliefs on someone else? We are not asking or telling anybody that they must have an abortion. We are simply submitting that it is a viable option. The fact still stands. What is it? It's a human person. So you cannot kill it. No matter the situation, any outside circumstances or conditions, all humans have the right to live. And the unborn is truly a human. Thank you. Give all the panelists one last round of applause.